meeting will return to order. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's fine. The committee reports have a typo in it. Comes comes from doing too many global replaces. It's not that big a deal. Let's move on to slide nine and the uh, resolutions. These resolutions um, did not have time limits adopted on them, so we need to start each one by adopting a time limit for it. The first item is a Hugo award eligibility extension request to move to extend the Hugo eligibility for the movie I Remember the Future due to extremely limited distribution. This requires a two-thirds vote. Is there any objection to four minutes debate? Two minutes. Two minutes. Suge uh, zero is not permitted. One minute. All right. Remember what I said about odd numbers? I will hunt you down. All right. Choices are four and two and one. All those in favor of four minutes, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. Four minutes is adopted. Uh, does the maker of the motion, is the maker of the motion here? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Uh, the chair recognizes Mr. Barkley. Yes. <laughs> Hello, I'm Chris Barkley. Uh, I'm here representing Michael Bursting and no, uh, Nomi Bursting in a plea to continue uh, for this continuing resolution. I, I ask that uh, we beg your indulgence because this film did receive limited distribution. Thank you, Mr. Eastlake. <clears throat> and uh, we, we would like uh, to beg your indulgence to continue uh, this resolution so that this particular and remarkable film will be uh, considered for next year's Hugos. We also uh, would like to uh, give our support to predestination as well, and I thank you very much. Is there a speech against? Any speech in favor? Hearing none, is there any objection to this resolution? There is, a re there is objection. A two-thirds vote, oops, hang on, I'll do this right away. A two-thirds vote being necessary to adopt this resolution. All those in favor of adopting resolution B21, I remember the future, extending its Hugo eligibility, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed? Hands down, there being two-thirds in the affirmative, the motion is adopted, this works eligibility is extended. A moment for secretarial catch-up. We're good? Yes. Okay. Item B22, which is uh, Hugo eligibility extension for predestination. Move to extend for one year the eligibility of the movie predestination based on limited availability. The default, the, is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, we're adopting four minutes on that one. I think you may have noticed it takes more time to set debate than, than you saved. Thank you. Okay, is the maker of this motion present? Yes. Come, uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, the mic. Uh, uh, secretary down here. Thank you. Mr. Kingsley? Yes, yeah, the chair recognizes Mr. Kingsley. Michael Kingsley, I think that this film is definitely worthy of a Hugo. It is an Australian film that was first presented to the public at uh, South by Southwest in 2014. It was then presented to the public at the Sydney Film Festival uh, later that year. And I uh, found out through File 770, apparently in late 2014, there were some international flights where the film was shown. However, for most people, and I assume most people in this room, it wasn't available until 2015 when it was released on DVD, uh, on demand, and uh, I think through one other venue I can't think of right now. But uh, the, the member is a, a reminded that you speak to the audience, not to the head table. Thank you. Um, but I'm finished with my speech. Thank you. <laughs> is there anyone who wishes to speak against this motion? 
Without objection, we will bring it to a vote. A two-thirds vote being necessary to extend the eligibility of this work. All those in favor of extending the work's eligibility, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. There being two-thirds in the affirmative, the motion uh, is carried and the eligibility of this work is extended. The chair notes a typo in his, in his slide where he said 16, he meant 6. I, I typed 16 where I meant 6. All right. I, I did that slide at 11 o'clock last night after doing match game. Thank you. All right. In this room, I might add. Item B23 is Hugo nominating data request. Moved that the WSPIS business meeting requests that the administrators of the 2015 Hugo Awards make publicly available anonymized raw voting data from the 2015 Hugo Awards, including the works nominated on each ballot in each category, but not including any information that could be used to relate ballots to the, uh, to the members who cast them, and resolved that it is the opinion of the business meeting that releasing such anonymized raw voting data after the announcement of the results of the 2015 Hugo Awards is not a violation of the privacy of members' ballots. Before I continue, the chair does observe that this is merely a request. The administrators of the Hugo Awards are, have complete and total authority under the WSPIS Constitution to do as they will with this. They do not have to release it, or they can release it at their discretion. The chair suggests six minutes debate time on this. Ten, Ten and twenty, four. and four, Six. and sixteen, just because I have dive in. <laughs> and I hear two. Eight. And eight. Four. That's enough, I think. That the, Jared will read them back. Mr. Dasha? No, bring it closer, Jared. Your chair went closer. Yeah, I have my chair went closer. Sit closer to you. 20, 16, 10, 8, 6, 4, and 2. Like of those, in favor, uh, those in favor of 20 minutes, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Okay. Thank you. No, it does not happen. What's next? 16? Yes. 16. Ah, ah, ah. ah. <laughs> those in favor of 16 minutes, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. That does not pass. What's next? 10. All in favor of 10 minutes, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. That does not pass. 8. All those in favor of 8 minutes, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Still doesn't have it. 6 minutes. All those in favor? Uh, all those opposed, hands down, those opposed. Uh, six minutes is adopted. See, if you just listened to me in the first place. <laughs> all right. The maker of the motion has preference in uh, uh, speaking here. Mr. Watt. I think you had a question. Yeah, is, is the, what, for what purpose did the member rise? Uh, the member will, uh, Mr. Watt, uh, Mr. Watt, will you please, uh, please yield uh, for the parliamentary inquiry? Come to the microphone. Uh, Aaron Davies, um, just a question about the exact text of the amendment. The version in the, the version in the printed program says in both places, anonymized raw nominating data. If I left the word nominating out when I reread, the, the version as printed is correct. You said voting both times. Uh, I apologize for the for re misreading it. The printed version is correct. An, uh, nominating data is what it's meant. Okay. The printed version in the in the agenda is correct. Thank, Thank you. you. Normally, I wouldn't care, but in this case, that's it's you're quite right. That's fine. All right. The chair recognizes Mr. Watt. Thank you. My name is Keenan Watt. Um, for those of you who didn't meet me last yesterday. This is a fairly low pressure thing. As we were developing EPH, we realized that it was very handy to have some actual data that we could use for developing the situation. And it doesn't just apply to us. It applies to anybody. It's great for transparency. We did actually have the 1984 actual ballots uh, that we used for, for testing and for as we were doing our developments. We also took the 2013 nomination data and did a statistical sampling that matched that. 
But we had a lot more confidence in the 1984 because, you know, it's the real thing. We don't feel that it would violate any kind of privacy issues or anything like that. Even if we, no matter what we decide what to do with the Hugos, it's useful information and it's historical information. The Hugos this year, for better or worse, are going to be a historical item. It's been one of the more important years that we've had. And if for no other reason than to have that available for us, you know, 50 years from now, I think that it's important that we have that. So, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Lorenz, speaking against the proposal. For what purpose does the member rise? I wanted to ask the, uh, the, 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 the uh, Too late. I, he'd already yielded the floor when you rose. Thank you. My name is John Lorenz. Uh, I believe that this resolution violates the Constitution of WISFUS under Section 3.11.4 about the releasing the voting to totals. It includes the statement that during the same period, the nomination vote total shall also be published, including each category. In each category, the vote counts for at least top 15 vote getters and any other nominee receiving number of votes equal to at least 5% of the nomination vote ballots cast in the category, but not including any nominee receiving fewer than five votes. Is the member raising a point of order that the motion is out of order for this purpose? Uh, yes, I suppose so. Yeah. Okay, that's important because I, the chair rules the point of order not well taken. The chair rules that the boarding inversion in 314 is a minimum, not a maximum, and that it is a, a permissible for the administrators to release more than the information that is listed here, but it must be okay. that. Now. Does, the chair, does the member want to appeal the ruling? Yes, I want to appeal the ruling. Is there a second to the appeal? Second, second. second the appeal. Okay. Um, that's an appeal, and it's going to end up using up all, probably going to end up using all the debate time on the motion, but okay. The... Um, the chair has a basic, again, an appeal works like this. The chair speaks on why he thinks the, ver, the, the ruling is correct. The chair gives the timekeeper a second. The, tar, the chair gives the timekeeper some time to catch up with it, yeah. This is an appeal. Let me do some quick math. Uh, what is this? The, the, this is an, the, okay, hang on a sec. This is an appeal, okay. Since the secretary asked, okay. Mr. Lorenz raised a point of order that the motion on the, that the, the resolution was out of order as unconstitutional and stated why. The chair ruled that the point of order was not well taken and stated why. Mr. Lorenz has appealed the ruling of the chair. The question before us is, shall the ruling of the chair stand? Okay, as soon as the timekeeper's ready. The chair believes that the wording in this motion or the wording in 311.4 represents the minimum requirement, not a maximum, and that administrators are allowed but not required to release more information than is provided here. Mr. Lorenz. Okay. Speaking, uh, speaking against the chair's as, ruling. Speaking against the chair's ruling. It says, the wording sa says specifically, the nomination voting totals shall be published, and it also includes that not including any nominee in receiving fewer than five votes. Therefore, I believe that it, sa it specifically says sh we shall release these and we are not allowed to release the ones receiving fewer than five votes. It's, I realize that the, the, the chair views this differently, but I think that the words matter. Okay, who would like to speak in favor of the chair's ruling? Um, Parliamentary inquiry. The member will come up front and state the parliamentary inquiry. Well, you have to uh, you put it put it as an inquiry and request. That's fine. Uh, I'd like to request that the secretary put. I would like to request name. name. Sorry, my name is Carl Fink. I'd like to request the secretary put the exact wording of the Constitution up on the screen so that the members can That'd review That'd be the parliamentarian, it. actually. Mr. Parliamentarian, my mistake. Uh, Mr. Eastlake, do you have the uh, Constitution handy? Uh, no, no. Sir, I do. can I get your name? Okay. It's Carl, with, it's a C, right? Carl, F-I-N-K. Oh, okay. Thank you. Right here. Sure, you can get it. 
Yeah. Uh, we, uh, uh, this is using up time, I know, but the, the parliamentarian is going to get a hold of the Constitution and bring the wording, which is in your program book, by the way. Which, uh, I have mine here. I have, I have brought it up, but it is section 3.11.4 uh, in question. Once we have it up, I'm going to... And we're going to make it a little larger, I think, if we can. Yeah, keep going. Whoops. <laughs> overshot, overshot. That's it. Yeah, it did get bigger. It's not changing. No, it's okay. I do believe Mr. Eastlake knows how to use a web browser. Give him a moment, please. <laughs> That's good. He's working on it, okay? Control A is your friend. Uh, that's about the best we'll do there. Okay, there's the wording on the screen. The chair... There, 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 there. okay. I have stopped. Stop, okay, fine, all right. The, the next person in line would be somebody speaking in favor of the chair's ruling. Um, Ms. Turk. Ooh. I'm giving preference to the fan guest of honor here, That's folks. That's a wild card. Didn't really expect that one. It seems pretty uh, clear. Yeah, take the microphone out and just, there, speak to me. Name. Leslie Turek. <laughs> That's not required. Um, <laughs> it seems pretty clear to me that that phrase was put in there just to reduce the burden on the committee so that they didn't feel like they had to list every single little thing that got nominated, which would probably be a list of a few hundred things. So I think the chair's right that it's not meant to preclude it. It's just saying you don't have to do it. Uh, a speech against the chair's ruling, Mr. Yallo. Getting real close. <laughs> Wait, I can ding people before they talk. If it would give you the big one instead of me. <laughs> Historically, sorry, Ben Yallo, remember to check me off. <laughs> yes. Historically, Nothing was released initially. There was then an extensive discussion and an elaborate compromise was reached between the people who wanted everything released and the people who felt that the traditional nothing should be released. This compromise was resulting in the wording that you see there as what people thought was the best way to split the difference between the two factions. And nothing else was intended when we passed this section. Is that time against the speech, against the chair's yeah. is expired? Do we have how much time in favor of the chair's ruling? Um, about 50 seconds. 50? Yeah. Five zero seconds? Yes. Uh, what was the question? Uh, who had a... Well, uh, a, the motion to close debate is not in order when there's less than one minute of debate time left. Who had his hand up first? Who had the who? In the far side over there? You, uh, speech in favor of the chair's ruling. Uh, go. You, you, take the take, take, if you, oh, we don't have the wireless mic. It ran out of back. Can you take the, is the wireless working again? Uh, no. Okay. Oh, he can get up there. Okay. The batteries are at the other end of the convention. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, my name is Mike Stern. My badge says rabble rouser. Um, I think that the, the defining words uh, in this are at least. Okay, 